friends, it is my great pleasure to tell you or remind you that we have a guest darshan this morning. Rabbi Hanan Schlesinger splits his time between Dallas and Alon Shvut in Israel. He will also be teaching us after lunch on the subject of inclusion and pluralism. Rabbi Schlesinger, will you please come and share your words of Torah with us? Shabbat shalom, everyone. It's quite touching for me to be here. It's uh, very powerful. The sense of inclusion and welcoming that I've seen in the past few minutes, in the past hour and a half, make me feel uh, inspired. And the service was beautiful and inspiring. I have so many of the faces here I know for many years. I feel almost at home. The building, I have taught in this holy space hundreds of classes. And now having a relationship with your rabbi, as I had with previous rabbis here, is all for me part of a wonderful uh, experience of Jewish togetherness and inclusion and, and being one family. So thank you for for having me here and making me feel so at home. In another few months, almost all of us, perhaps all, will sit down to the Passover Seder with family, with friends, with acquaintances, and we'll commemorate the exodus of our forefathers from Egypt. We'll remember the suffering of our Israelite forefathers, slaves, at the hand of Paro, and that God redeemed them from the house of bondage with an outstretched hand. We're going to retell the events that befell our ancestors, and we're going to try to live what they went through and to experience ourselves both their pain, their trials and tribulations, and their triumph and exaltation. In doing so, we're going to be observing one of the oft-repeated precepts of the Torah, more than any other mitzvah, any other commandment, the Torah commands us again and again to remember that we were slaves and that we were strangers in Egypt and that God freed us from there, from the house of bondage. Passover is the pinnacle of our remembrance of Egyptian slavery and redemption from there, but it's not. It's not the only occasion on which we remember those things. Among other things, Shabbat. Shabbat is remembrance of not just creation, but also of the Egyptian experience. And more, in the third paragraph of Shema that we just said a few minutes ago, we say it twice daily, every day. We remember the Exodus on every holiday, all the holidays, not just Passover, we remember the Exodus from slavery. Why? Why is this commandment to remember our slavery Remember what we went through when we were strangers in Egypt. Why is it so central to Judaism? Why is it so important? Why does the Torah repeat it again and again? And why is it so important to us here in the 21st century to remember that so many thousands of years ago, we were slaves and we were strangers in Egypt? I'll go even further, ask the question even deeper. Why did God, to begin with, see to it that we were slaves in Egypt so many years ago? Why did he turn the wheels of history such that our ancestors would suffer so and thereby be in need of his redemption? And if you're uncomfortable with phrasing of the question in terms of God's providence, I'll ask it differently. I'll say the following. Why did the Torah devote so many words and so many sentences and so many paragraphs to describing our experiences of pain and suffering and slavery in Egypt and so many paragraphs and so many chapters to the Exodus from freedom. Why, why, why? I think there's one answer to all these questions and the answer is well near explicit in the Torah itself. The answer is found in many places in the Torah and one of them is in this week's Torah portion, Parshat Mishpatim. I'm going to read to you two verses that are in this week's Torah portion. You must not mistreat 
or oppress the stranger in any way. Remember you yourselves were once strangers in the land of Egypt. And the second verse. You must not oppress strangers. You know what it feels like to be a stranger. For you yourselves were once strangers in the land of Egypt. We were oppressed strangers in the land of Egypt because, because God wanted us to know what it's like to be the persecuted other. He wanted to have the experience embedded in our consciousness for all time so that we would not behave towards others as the Egyptians behaved towards us. You will not succeed in caring for the stranger, implies the Torah, until you yourselves know in your very bones and in your sinews what it feels like to be the stranger. This is why we must remember the experience, relive it every year, and pass it on to our children and to our grandchildren. We must not forget the taste of bitterness and affliction, that sense of being marginalized and dehumanized. For those who forget what it feels like to be a stranger and an other eventually may come to oppress the stranger and the other. You know, human beings are tribal animals. We form ourselves into groups. I think there's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, it's wonderful. We are able to go beyond ourselves and form webs of connectivity, of inclusiveness. This is the foundation of altruism towards the people to whom we feel affinity who are capable of love in the loftiest unselfishness. But at the same time that our tribalism unites, it also divides. While it creates an us, it also creates a them. It binds us to some, but it can blind us the essential humanity of others. The I of self-interest turns into the we of the common good, but the very act of creating an us simultaneously creates a them, the people not like us. Sometimes we ignore them and we shun them. At other times we do worse and we discriminate against them and persecute them, and sometimes we come completely dehumanize them and perpetrate against them unspeakable horrors and atrocities. The solution is role reversal. The memory of our experience in Egypt as the consummate other allows us to put ourselves in the place of all the marginalized and oppressed in all societies and all times. We cannot ignore them. We Jews cannot ignore them or denigrate them or exclude them or even worse, hurt them because we see ourselves in them. We look at them and it's like looking in the mirror. We see ourselves in all the others of the world, which means the other, ideally for Jews, the other is never fully other because we have been there and through our historical identity, We are still there. It's part of us that we have been the other, the other. On so many different levels, unconsciously and consciously, we divide between us and them. Where I come from, it's Israelis and Palestinians. Where you come from, Jews and Gentiles, Americans and foreigners, blacks and whites. There are gays. And there are straights, there's reformed Jews, conservative Jews, orthodox Jews. For some, it's the Republicans that are the other. For some, it's the Democrats. And then there are people with disabilities of all types, people with special needs of all kinds. Sometimes we exclude them. We make of them an other in ways that we might not even be aware. Without knowing it, we may call into question their value, and may act in a fashion that calls into question their dignity. In Dallas, and I think in around the USA, in recent years, we've been doing better. In Israel, I'll tell you the truth, it's taking longer. And we can, in the US, in Dallas, continue to do better, because we know, we Jews know the key, one of the keys, role reversal. Our tradition has taught us to 
place ourselves in their place, and we would not do towards them as we would not want done towards ourselves. And the Torah tells us, love the stranger, the other, because you know the pain of the stranger, the other. continuing learning with you this afternoon after Kiddush, uh, Kiddush lunch that is.